tengan cuidado con los golpes en la cabeza, tengan cuidado con los golpes bajos, golpe en la espalda y cuidado con los golpes atrás de la cabeza. Uh -huh. Cada vez que les digas todos, van a retirar sin tirar un golpe. ¿Está bien? Salúdense y que gane el mejor. Featherweights now inside the RJJ ring. Scheduled four rounds of boxing here in San Carlos. It is the Cuban product in JLA Lopez taking on the Jalisco native in Armando Ramirez. Oh no. oh. TJ DeSantis, James Smitty Smith inside the Marina Terra Event Center in San Carlos. Lopez in the teal, Ramirez in the blue. You know, I, I mentioned uh, the main event uh, fighters and they're probably going to obviously have to come in the ring earlier than expected because of the brevity of some of the other fights but for the swing for, for anybody out there who wonder what it's like to be a fighter uh, you know a swing bout fighter i've been in that position before and you're just sitting there waiting you don't know whether you're going to fight at six o'clock or ten right. o'clock you just simply don't know and one time when i had one, one of my fights they sent me out to the ring and then called me back and i had to go back oh and no then I, tw Thank twice you. i Thank you, Twice I was in a situation where I was uh, gone in, went into the ring and then and had to go back to the dressing room. So it can be a, a real precarious <laughs> situation. But uh, the swing bouts can uh, bail you out sometimes. That was a nice hook by uh, uh, Lopez. We see now, you know, these fighters making the most of this opportunity. Both men 3-0 and oh, undefeated. Didn't know when they were going to be fighting Smitty. And now they find themselves in front of a worldwide audience live on UFC Fight Pass. Both unbeaten guys. Lopez appears to have more power. I like the way he uh, torqued that left hook a, a moment ago. And when you're in the swing bout, Smitty, as you mentioned, are you just constantly trying to stay loose, trying to, to get a, a good it, sweat on? It's a very, very difficult situation uh, because you want a fighter. You know, my trainer always taught me you want to come out like with about three rounds of perspiration on you. And when you're a, a swing guy, you know, you, you can... Uh, have that going on and then be ready to go out and then they tell you not to go out or you can come too early to the it's just a really difficult situation because sometimes you spend everything in the dressing room right. you know it's it's really difficult and uh, the best thing to do is just try and stay as relaxed as you can mentally physically and spiritually until called upon nice uppercut there found the chin of Ramirez by Lopez Lopez fighting out of Cuba. It's been a good night for the Cubans inside the ring. And, and one interesting thing, these aren't the Cubans I'm used to from Miami. They throw everything. These aren't the Irislandi Laras and, uh, you know, Casamayors. These guys throw everything, everything hard. You can hear the small crowd that is inside the Marina Terra Event Center here. You know, staff and production kind of coming alive a little bit. These guys putting on a show. One thing I don't like from Lopez is his head is, he's doing some upper body movement, but his head's a little too stiff and in front. Good body shot by Ramirez there. Seems like there's been a real change in the in the, in the the Cuban fighters. And it's probably it's probably a product of uh, their amateur training now. Stop! Stop! They're just simply not as slick. Right. Still very doggone good and very powerful, but almost uh, more of fighting more in the Mexican style uh, than the uh, Cuban style that I was so accustomed, uh, you know, to and boxing fans are from the past. One round of four scheduled down here in San Carlos. Again, featherweights inside the RJJ ring. It is our swing bout. Jaylee Lopez, 3-0, taking on Jalisco's Armando Ramirez. And Smitty, these guys, you know, trying to make the most of the opportunity. Didn't know they were going to be on UFC Fight Pass tonight, and they're trying to uh, represent themselves uh, proudly. Yeah, back and forth action in round number one, primarily the best of it by Lopez. There was a Cuban fighter, though, that was a great one named Florentino Fernandez, who's a member of the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame like I am, and he's a guy that, uh, you know, fought for the title, uh, the middleweight title a few times. You had, Louis, you had Louis Rodriguez, the slickster in the gym. At the same time, you had Florentino Fernandez, who was a really aggressive, hard-hitting, very powerful uh, Cuban fighter. Round two, Fernandez. <laughs> round two underway here in San Carlos. Featherweights inside the ring. Cuba's Lopez in the teal. Mexico's Ramirez in the blue. Well, Lupe said somebody's O has got to go, and it looks like 
both of them are in danger of that, the way they're throwing. Again, I, I think Lopez is the harder puncher, but I've seen some good stuff out of uh, Ramirez, and he's showing good defense. Both guys focused, trying to set up their offense. Decent head movement by Ramirez. Featherweight's inside the ring right now. Again, this is our swing bat. Don't forget our welterweight main event coming your way. A little bit later, we see Santiago Dominguez, the Sonora State native, the man they call Summer, taking on a very game, Ricardo Lada. That's your main event coming up after this. But round two of four scheduled. I haven't seen Ramirez fight, but what I would like to see, I think he'd have more success if he'd get on the inside, kind of uh, try to glue himself to the body of Ramirez and try to land some body shots. But perhaps that's not his style. Nice right hand by, over the top by Lopez. Ooh, left hook by Lopez. You can see some of the damage there on the face of Ramirez. And for Lopez, he just needs to keep this fight on the outside and land his uh, combinations. He's a good combination puncher. Uh -oh. Ooh, that one looks like it went low. Referee immediately recognized that. I think this is the second uh, shot that has landed uh, below the belt video. We saw one earlier where Ramirez just dropped to a knee and, and got back to fighting relatively quickly, but this one seemed to have more pop on it. I will, I do think it was low. I, the trunks are very high uh, by Ramirez, but I do think it was, uh, it's, it's straight low. We'll see how low, very low, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Very low. I mean, everything south of the border when we're in Mexico, but that was definitely that south was of the border. about as low as you can go, and uh, I know that feeling too, but I won't describe it. I'll, I'll spare the fans uh, for how that feels. Uh, I think girl. I have a good idea. <laughs> So, I mean, what, what do you do here if you're, you're the referee? Are you contemplating taking a point? Is it still too no, early for that? Yeah, absolutely not. That would be bad because he didn't warn him, and clearly it was uh, unintentional. And uh, you want to, you definitely want to warn a guy at least uh, for a low blow, at least once. I mean, take me inside the mind here uh, of Ramirez. Obviously, you have up to five minutes. How would you spend this trying to recover as much as you can? You know, that all depends on the human being, the man, the fighter, uh, you know, what you're, you're dealing with or how often you've ha uh, been in that type of situation. You have the protective cup, and uh, but nevertheless, when they're low like that, even when you get hit on the cup, it hurts. So um, I just depends on the individual. I, I think he took what a, but it seems like he took a minute or two and right back to the body goes, goes Lopez. We'll see if Ramirez can utilize that low blow as some sort of motivation. He's Definitely swinging. Blood coming from his uh, nose, Ramirez. But now he's getting a little irresponsible with his defense. Another low blow, I think. Yeah, and uh, again, you can see Ramirez taking a knee. This is now likely the, the, the third low blow. Again, the first one wasn't really a, a long, drawn-out process, but... And this one, you know, a lot quicker, back-to-back -back low blows I, compared to the first. I would have taken more time. Now I think he runs into the situation of, he's already, by the way, not everything's going low. Because he's, he's really busted up as well. It's true. Ooh, nice left hand there by Lopez. There's the end of the round. You know, that's, that's one thing I, I wonder, Smitty, is when you are hit low, Obviously, there's an emotional response as well. You get upset, you get angry. Maybe sometimes fighters come back a little too quickly because they want to, you know, deal with that anger by trying to go punch their opponent in the face. Well, it could be a macho thing. It could be a thing to not let, uh, you know, to show your opponent that it didn't affect you. But you got to get all that out of your your system when you're hit with an, uh, an illegal blow like that. That can affect you and take a lot out of you. You you will recover from it, but it takes a little time. See the action, we'll, we'll get a chance. A lot of uh, accurate head punches, too, by uh, Lopez. The jab, the right hand, another jab. There's the low blow. I think that was the first one. I believe so. 
and Lopez wasn't concerned about getting any points taken away or getting. He was going right back at it, which you actually should do, unless right. you, you know, you you're, you're Andrew Galata and you you've landed a lot of right. low blows and been warned and warned and warned, and then it becomes stupidity. You got to change your game, and uh, you know sometimes I've, I've I've seen fighters where they've been told just no more body punches at all. A shot of our main event. Santiago Somer Dominguez, undefeated as a pro, looks for another huge win tonight when he takes on the veteran in Ricardo Lada. That is headed your way after this, our swing bout here inside the RJJ ring, headed into round number three, featherweights, Cuba's Jali Lopez, 3-0, taking on Armando Ramirez. Again, TJ DeSantis. James Fitty Smith inside the Marina Terra Hotel and Spa Event Center in San Carlos. Night two of our two night double header for RJJ Boxing on UFC Fight Pass. And we talk about the uh, low blows a little bit, but as you mentioned, Smitty, shouldn't change the narrative that Ramirez has eaten plenty of shots to the face as well. Yeah, Lopez has pretty much dominated the action in the first two rounds using his height and reach, accurate punching. Ramirez has had a few moments, but by and large, it's been a pretty dominant performance by, by, by Lopez. And another one, low, gotta take says a point. Ramirez. I've got to take a point now, I think. I mean, this is number four. And he is, he is taking a point. Now, if, you, if you're Ramirez, you know, uh, how much time do you take here? I mean, again, he's fourth low blow, and he's getting back in there relatively quickly. Yeah, I, I just think that's a lack of experience. I think he should have taken more time. He did get a, a point. So, you know, he possibly uh, <laughs> could win the, win the round. Should be able to, to win the round off of that. But also, it's a matter of being able to weather weather all of those, you know, low blows. And now we see the point taken away for, from Lopez. So, are the body shots off the table at this point for him, Smitty? Uh, you know, I, I, now I would start to really raise it up to the, you know, to the the, the chest section. If you're going to go to the body, and a good fighter knows how to do that, you just you bring your hooks higher up and you shoot for more the shoulders with your hooks rather than looking for kidney shots, liver shots, rib shots. And you know, Lopez is a is a good boxer too. He could win this fight just by boxing if he chose to. Right. Ramirez trying to land some offense of his own to the body of Lopez. Featherweight's definitely going to war. Undefeated stop, stop. boxers stop. inside stop. the RJJ stop. ring tonight. Our swing bout. Stop. You know, for all the adversity that Ramirez has had to deal with in this fight, he's definitely, you know, trying to be a, an aggressive fighter here in round number three. 30 seconds left in the round. He's having some good moments. I still think Lopez winning the round. But Ramirez uh, has landed a couple shots, and I, I think it's gotten in the head of Lopez, and he's had a point taken away. Big right hand there by Lopez. Yes, I will know. You, you talk about that point deduction for Lopez, and maybe it's in the back of the head. What do you generally see when that does affect a fighter in a negative way? The, the, the fighter getting hit or the no, fighter? No, 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 the fighter losing the point. It, yeah, does, well, it, does it change their output to it, a point where it, Detrimental? It, only, only, again, only in this situation right now where there's been a, a point taken away. I don't know this this referee, whether he's a guy who would stop it with the next one or would take another point away. Um, so I, I think I would err on the side of caution right. because Lopez can win this fight any way he wants to, in, in my opinion. So I would get away from the body and stuff and just, just work, on the, work on clean, accurate head punching in this uh, last round. And if the body shots are off the table here, Smitty, you got to believe that uh, it, it's 
this is when you would want them off the table because there's only one round left. You know, right. looking at Lopez, it's just three Buena more seco. minutes of work Buena and seco. he should be getting his hand raised. And, and you know, abajo. Abajo. body punches for the most part are better in, 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 in distance fights. You start working the body to take it away from another Hola. guy. Uh, by the way, that, that last Hola. round, Hola. You take Hola. a point away Hola. from uh, Lopez. Hola. So that makes him nine. But I thought he won the round, so I have it a nine-nine round. So nevertheless, I have... Uh, him ahead by a couple of points here. Some spilled ice there in the corner of Lopez, so a delay to the start of this fourth and final round. Oh no. Whoa. But with that cleaned up, we are ready to go. He'd be comfortably ahead, but because of that point, and if that round did go to Ramirez, then you just gotta focus on just winning, winning the round. And he can do it by boxing. He's got good boxing skills. You know, we talk about, you know, these, these young boxers here, and, you know, you mentioned his skills, Smitty. Uh, you know, young in his career, th this is a, a, a growing uh, process for him. I think he's probably learning that, you know, there, there are times to make adjustments, even when you are in control in a lot of ways. Yeah, and especially produced by, you know, the, the, point, the point deduction. Adjusting, being able to adjust, being able to sometimes have a plan B and even a plan C at times are what turn good fighters into great fighters and great fighters into legends. Just two nice. minutes left here in this fight for these featherweights. He went back to the body there. There he went it again. Really, I can see why he wants to go to the body because it's there and it really has an effect on, on Ramirez. Even the, leg the legal shots. Ramirez showing a lot of a game this year. Busted up the nose, bleeding. Two or three low blows, been down from them. And he's hanging in there. And again, as you mentioned, he probably thought he was fighting in an hour and a half from now. Right. <laughs> But again, it goes back to what I think makes great fighters and, and you know, adjusting and, and, and rolling with the, uh, you know, punches proverbial and, and of course, you know, uh, literal. Yeah, and just in the ability, certainly at, at 3 and 0, oh, he's oh, no, probably not oh, no, been in this kind of a, oh, no. a situation oh, no. before. Less than a minute remains here in this fourth and final round. What Lopez has to be careful is not to throw another low blow, not to get another, because it could end up being a draw if right. you do that. I still think that I would have him winning by a, a point, but I don't know how the judges had it. That last round, they might have given to Ramirez even, and then you add the other point, almost, be, you know, comes a two-point round. 30 seconds left here. Oh, no, let's go. Oh, let's go. Come on. We'll see what these two featherweights have left in the gas tank as we close out this fight. You see Ramirez clinching a lot more here down the final moments of this bout. There it is, four rounds in the books. Cuba's J. Lee Lopez and Jalisco's Armando Ramirez. Just four rounds, but a lot of twists and turns in that uh, in that fight, Smitty, with the low of, blows and, yeah. A lot of twists, turns, and south of the border shots. Right. Point deductions, I have it 39, 36 for Lopez. So we're doing addition and subtraction and We'll get a winner here in a moment as the judges tally their tens and nines. But let's take a look at some of this action again. These two men did not know that they would be on tonight's UFC Fight Pass broadcast. And they definitely came out and tried to make the most of the opportunity. There's a beautiful legal left hook to the body. He was There's one a little bit high on the trunks, but still legal because he, he, he has his trunks, uh, Ramirez, very high. On the inside fighting there. Lopez had found a home for the body work. He just strayed a little bit too low with it. When you look at Lopez and, and the adjustments that he made after the point deduction, do you feel that we saw a different fighter post point deduction from him? 
No, pretty much the same. He he did. I could tell that he was uh, bringing his hooks up a little bit. Didn't want to get penalized again. Didn't want to get another deduction. Perhaps the corner told him to do so. But pretty much the same. And I actually thought he was a little bit better when he wasn't, <laughs> I've said this earlier, wasn't throwing everything hard. It's something we've seen these Cuban fighters tonight. I'm used to the slick Cubans, and these guys come out. Maybe it's maybe it's something in the, the, the air here in Mexico that, makes them fight like Mexican fighters, but entertaining, and it and it certainly served a, a purpose for us, didn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, 100%. Some bonus boxing. I'm never going to argue with that. All right, the judges have tallied their scorecards and rendered a decision. It lies with Lupe. After going all four rounds here to Marina Tierra Hotel and Spa, we go to the scorecard to determine a winner. Judge Scotta scores about 39-36. Judge Orona also scores at 39-36. And Judge Drew scores about 38 to 37. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. El Capirro. Jaile Lopez. Lopez getting his hand raised tonight. Now 4-0 and oh as a pro. Making the most of the opportunity live on UFC Fight Pass. Credit to Armando.